Okay guys, so today's tutorial is going to be the tutorial which I attempted to do a few days ago, which I accidentally recorded on mute, so this is just going to be it again for you guys for YouTube. Okay, so today's tutorial is going to be over fall damage, it's going to be blueprint tutorial uh, versus, you know, C++, uh, and we're going to see how that goes. So, to start, I'm going to be using the third person example project you don't have to uh, but you know rather than writing my own scripts for the player controller and all of that I'll just start off with this and incorporate the fall damage now so I'm going to call this fall damage 14 so uh, let's just create this project now once your project is loaded you're going to want to go into your uh, well, to start, we're going to go into our stuff here, so into our project files, and just go wherever you want. I'm going to do this, so I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go into user interface. Uh, so I'm going to be putting mine in the third-person BP blueprints folder right next to the character. I just prefer to do that, but, you know, you can do whatever you'd like. So I'm going to create a widget blueprint, and I'm going to call this health... Uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Let's just create that widget and uh, let's go into our health widget. And I'm just going to put this up here. So to start, uh, we're just going to look at this whole uh, little canvas we have here. And we're going to get a new item, which is going to be a progress bar. So progress bar is going to go here. We'll just drag this out a bit. Uh, so I'm going to have a progress bar up here. This is just going to be my health bar. Honestly, you don't have to, uh, like, do anything in particular for this. You know, you could you could just use an integer, but I prefer to have that, like, progress bar type look. You know, just like you would in a game. Uh, so, let's see. Let's get a nice deep red. Uh, why can't I? Yeah, there we go. That works. So, now that we've got a nice, like, red color for our bar, uh, we're going to have to go into our percent and create a binding. And our binding is going to be to a variable, which we are going to create in here. So we're going to go back to our, um, we're going to go to our event graph, and we're going to create a variable. We're going to call this health. So this is going to be the value of our player's health. Uh, this value is going to be a float, and it's going to be editable and exposed on spawn. Now, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to compile and save this and then go into my get percent. Now, get percent takes a value from 0 to 1, a float value. So, in order to get a value from 0 to 1, uh, 0 being 0%, 1 being 100%, and everything in between being as you would expect, I'm going to have to get my health value, which is going to be out of 100, and go divide and we're going to do float divided by float and then we're going to divide this by 100 and that will give us the value we need so going into here we're just going to bring this up a bit and yeah, that's it for this blueprint now what we need to do is we need to create our own you know we need to initiate this essentially so we need to start it up somehow so I'd suggest doing it in your character so, like, in your player controller, or whatever blueprint you have as your player controller, you know, whether it be, um, just, like, simple or advanced, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm just gonna go into this one. This is the character controller for the third-person character. Uh, I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna go up here, and I'm going to add in an event, begin, begin, play. Uh, and this will just initiate once the level is loaded. So, in the case of my multiplayer game, this is very important that it goes in here, because when the level loads, third-person character will load. I obviously don't want the health widget uh, loading while you're on the menu screen, so this was a way to do that without any advanced, you know, like, variables or anything like that. So, on Event Begin Play, we're going to have to add this to the screen. Uh, so, what we're going to start by doing is we're going to say, is valid uh, and this is valid is going to be in order to create this widget and then if it isn't valid 
uh, and I'll get to what this is checking for later. We're going to go um, create widgets. This is how I instantiate all of my widgets. So I'm going to get player controller uh, in order to fill this owning player slot. And for a class, we'll just select our health class. And so we're going to create a health widget. So we'll create the instance of this. That way it's accessible from the code. And um, you know now what we're going to do is we're going to just go over here and we're going to say add, or sorry, promote to variable. And we're going to call this health, health UI. So this is the health user interface. Uh, so now that this is a variable, we can reference this in the code if we want to do anything in the future. For now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go add to, sorry, add to viewport. Uh, and this is going to go add this whole thing to our viewport. That way you can see the health value. You can see the bar and you can see everything we've created so far. So now that that's done, oh, uh, one second. We're gonna we're gonna have to do this. So we have an object we need to input. Now we have a variable called healthy UI. So we're just gonna grab this and we're gonna put it in. And this health UI variable here is gonna be our input object. That way, if this is null, we know we haven't created it, so we create one. And then we set this one to be equal to that. That way, this doesn't run that multiple times and you know mess up our game by adding it too many times. And also we have a way to reference this in order to change values. So we've created that. Now the one thing I want to add here is that you want to set your health to 100. That way you have a value and it doesn't you know show up with nothing there. So now you know obviously you want your player to start with 100 health. So now we're going to test it once. So let's start it in a window and you can see the health bar is now working. So uh, what we got to do uh, you know next is we've got to go add event pick. This is, this is the way I've been doing damage. I don't know if other people uh, do this. I see, uh, I don't, you know, I certainly know there are other ways of doing uh, fall damage, but I do an event tick. So we're gonna need a new variable here, which is gonna be called damage. And um, we call this damage to give. So damage to give is going to be a float. And I'm just going to make it editable and expose on spawn. I prefer to do that. It just it makes things simpler in the future, you know. It's almost like more accessible uh, when you're writing projects with more code. But I don't think this is that important on this one. It's not really going to make a difference, I don't think. But, you know, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get this uh, character movement variable here. Or this, you know, instance. So this... this um, is essentially a character movement variable and what we can do is we can reference this here so we can say you know get velocity which is what we need now and essentially if we bring this over what we can do is we can set up some branches so here I'll set up the first branch and this is just going to be you know a random branch here now uh, I already calculated values for what the velocity should be from, you know, certain heights. So, like, say you're falling from, you know, a few, few meters up, what, what damage amount you do based on the velocity. So, I'll show you how this is going to work. Now, in my case, I found that the best value would be to be less than or equal to is what I need. So, we're going to say less than or equal to. So, essentially, if velocity, which is, by the way, a uh, vector, so what we need to do is split struct pin and get the z velocity. If velocity is less than or equal to, and then a value. And so in my case, I found that the best one was 1,000 for, you know, a good value to start. I don't know if you'd want this in your game, you know, it depends, uh, but that's what I'm using. Uh, and I can tell you in a second how you would do that. So, now we need one more, which is going to be a greater than float. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to say if it's greater than, and then I'm going to put in 1,200. And then we need an and here. 
right? Yeah, that's the and. Right? And then we're going to connect that as the condition for this um, branch. This is about, you know, three and a third meters. So, you know, at least like 15 feet ish. Not really sure. I don't know the meter, like the exact, you know, meter to feet. I think it's like 3.33. We'll see. It doesn't matter though. So, essentially, if this is true, if it's between these two values, you can say set set damage to get. And um, we're going to set it to like 10 just for, you know, this tutorial. And then if it's false, we're going to do another branch. And we can then say, you know, is uh, it, we can do the same thing, but we can say is less than or equal to. And you could keep doing this like thing here where you have the and statement and eventually like max it out to, you know, absolutely dead. But in my case, I'm just gonna have two values for simplicity purposes and time uh, you know, issues. So let's do negative 1200 and if this is true, which it ought to be, uh, we're going to just set damage to give to be equal to, and then I, I did in my game like more practical stuff, but here we'll just say 50 because that is the easiest to deal with. So this is our script, now we need another. So. This is going to be an event on landed, so when the player lands. Now, uh, I'm going to have some stuff here, which first is going to be um, getting the damage to give value. So, how much damage they've racked up falling. Uh, we're also going to need to, uh, like, essentially get our health UI and then get health as our value. So if we get the health value, you know, this is gonna be crucial and it's gonna let us change stuff. So we're also going to want to use another, yeah, we can use the same instance and we're gonna set health. So set the health UI's instance of health. Um, and there's gonna be a quick calculation. We do nothing like too, nothing too bad. Uh, and all that's gonna be is just health minus so float minus float um, damage to give. And what this is gonna do is it's just going to give us the health back after this damage has been taken off your current health value. And this means that. Um, upon landing, it'll do damage to you. Now, the last thing that needs to be done here is we need to go get the damage value. So, set damage to give. Right. And we need to set this... Oh, shoot. Let's just break link. Uh, so yeah, set it to zero. That way, the next time you fall, it's reset. So, if you didn't fall, you know, really from really high up, it will be at zero again, you know, because otherwise it would stay too high. So now we're gonna check this out. Doesn't hurt you, obviously. Oh shoot! Yeah, uh, I forgot what I do need to do here, and it's not like a big deal. It's just gonna be a matter of, you know, how far do I want to fall from? So let's say like here. Let's try that. Okay, one sec. I don't know if that was like too little falling or if it actually didn't work. So we'll see. Yeah, that works. Uh, and then what we need to do is just bring it up a little bit more and just let it fall. And it did half health. So that uh, is working. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Now, 
if you wanted to, you could add to this, you could add more of these, you could create an equation to calculate more dynamic health change values, um, you know, etc. Uh, but right now, this is it for all you need for health damage, you know. Uh, and just to show you the importance of that whole damage thing, as you can see, it doesn't do any more damage or anything. There are no bugs there. So, yeah. Uh, if you liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.